Hey, thanks for stopping by, Smoking Steve. Today we're going to be talking about the Acorn Smoker Grill. We're going to be talking about the basics of the Acorn, uh, some different options that you have, uh, difference between smoking, grilling, setup. We're going to show uh, damper control and how to regulate your temperatures. So uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for uh, notifications. Uh, we're going to be having some uh, lip smacking good recipes on here. Uh, some of your favorites and well some uh, maybe you never even thought of. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. So uh, let's get out of the kitchen now and uh, go outside and see where the magic happens. Follow me. Okay, this is where all the magic happens. This is the Acorn Smoker Grill. Uh, let's come in and uh, take a look at this top damper here. As you can see, it's uh, fully closed right now. Now when you light the grill, you're going to want to open that up all the way. Okay, so that one's open all the way. Now if we uh, go on down to look at the uh, bottom damper, uh, that's right here. Now you want that, that to be open all the way as well. So, okay, let's go over here and let me introduce you to your uh, newest best friend. Your newest best friend is going to be uh, temperature probes, okay? Uh, I have a temperature probe uh, here that's uh, running into the grill, and that'll plug into the uh, transmitter. And then I have a probe that uh, will go into the meat, so you can monitor your uh, meat temperature and that will also plug into the transmitter and then this guy right here uh, that's the receiver okay uh, you can turn that on and it will uh, automatically get the uh, temperature of the meat and the grill uh, if you're in the house or uh, on a patio or wherever you're at uh, it will register on this uh, receiver here and it's transmitted from the uh, transmitter uh, so that makes it kind of handy and also it has uh, alarms for low temperature, high temperature, stuff like that. And uh, this guy here is the uh, digital probe to uh, double check your meat probe. You want to make sure your uh, meat is done when you take it off. So I always like to double check the uh, temperature with the uh, digital thermometer here and uh, see where we're at. Now this is a charcoal that you want to use. It's called uh, lump charcoal, and it's uh, what it is. It's made from wood, and it's uh, burnt with very little oxygen uh, or no oxygen. Uh, I don't know how they do that, but anyway, uh, that's what I hear. Uh, it's burnt with uh, very little to no oxygen, and uh, the wood turns into charcoal. And uh, why do you ask this? Why is this better than the briquettes? Well, the briquettes uh, don't burn as hot. The lump charcoal burn hotter. And as far as ash is concerned, the uh, lump charcoal makes very little ash. Uh, you take a bag of briquettes this size, and it would uh, make almost a full bag of ash. And you take a bag of the lump like this, and uh, you're going to have. Uh, Oh, maybe uh, enough ash that would fill a, uh, a gallon container, let's say, or less. And it's very efficient. This is what you want to use, lump charcoal. And uh, Royal Oak is just one of the brands. There's a cowboy brand, and there's several brands out there. And uh, I don't know if one's better than the other, but, uh, you know, just whatever you can pick up locally. Okay, when smoking, uh, I generally use uh, hickory chips or chunks, uh, depending on the, you know how long the smoke's going to be. If it's going to be a longer smoke, I'll use the big chunks, and if it's going to be a short smoke, I'll just use uh, chips. And uh, this is the size of a couple of the chunks that I pulled out of the bag. Uh, pretty good size. Uh, and when you're smoking. Uh, you want to place these around the coals in various spots. I'll put maybe six or eight in and kind of scatter them around. And 
And here I'm showing you the uh, bag of uh, small chips, uh, hickory chips again. And uh, that's about the size of the chips. When using those, uh, I just generally throw them uh, right on top of the coals, a handful or maybe a couple handfuls, and uh, let them smoke away. Okay, now when uh, starting your fire, uh, you could use a fire starter like this. Uh, this is uh, made from uh, wood chips, paper, and wax. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, you just take this uh, cube here and stick it down the coals and light it and throw a few coals on top of it and you're on your way to a fire. Uh, now I've got to warn you. Uh, well, it's not a warning, but uh, anyway, uh, the wife and I uh, did notice a slight uh, waxy taste on the food when using these. Uh, just barely noticeable, but uh, this is a good way to get your fire started. Now here's another product they sell uh, for starting fires, uh, getting your charcoal going. Uh, they're uh, Weber lighter cubes, and they're... Uh, a wax cube. Uh, here it is. No, they're not that big. They light really well. Uh, if it's a windy day, uh, these will generally light and uh, take off real well. But again, the wife and I did notice a slight uh, uh, waxy taste in our food. Uh, so uh, beware of that. Now here's something I started to use to get the uh, coals going and get them lit. Uh, what's in the jar is uh, just plain old cotton balls and alcohol. I take a bunch of cotton balls and uh, put them in a jar and uh, pour a bunch of alcohol in there and let them soak in the alcohol. Then when I'm ready to uh, light the grill, I'll take uh, two or three of them out of the jar, uh, squeeze uh, excess uh, alcohol out of the cotton ball, and uh, put them in the center of the coals, and uh, light the cotton balls, and throw a few coals on top, and you're on your way to a nice little smoke. And by the way, there's no waxy taste in your food. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get this grill lit, and uh, uh, we'll just present, pretend like we're going to smoke something today and uh, set it up for a smoke and uh, go from there. Uh, okay, before you light the grill, you want to make sure this damper's all the way open. And there's a damper down here on the bottom. You want to make sure that's all the way open as well. So, okay, let's uh, open the lid, see what's going on in here. And uh, we have this uh, accessory rack here. If you have too much food, uh, you can utilize this, uh, otherwise uh, you can take that off, set it aside. And uh, uh, we're going to take these uh, grates off. And uh, <clears throat> just to give you a hint here, uh, this uh, center grate right here, uh, that fits in there pretty loose. And uh, in the process, uh, taking the big grate out uh, I left this in and it fell out and broke so uh, a little advice uh, go ahead and take this out before moving the big grate and uh, just set that aside and you can take the big grate out okay uh, now we have uh, Left, leftover uh, lump charcoal in here from the last cook uh, so we're gonna reuse that and uh, what you do is uh, I'm gonna take my uh, three cotton balls here uh, that's soaked in alcohol kind of squeeze some of that excess oil out and not oil but the alcohol and we're just gonna place that uh, kind of in the center of the coals. After I get those
after I get those uh, cotton balls placed in there, grab my lighter. And uh, give those cotton balls a light there. Then I'll take some uh, yeah, some smaller pieces of charcoal, kind of place around there. Kind of build a little teepee or what have you. And uh, And just to note, uh, before we lit this, we made sure both dampers were wide open. Both the top and bottom dampers are wide open. And we're going to let that burn a little bit. Uh, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, it's been about uh, five minutes since I've uh, lit the cotton balls. And i uh, got a pretty good flame going there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and add some... Uh, charcoal chunks. We're just going to place a few of them kind of around the lump of charcoal. Spread them out a little bit so as the uh, coals get lit hopefully uh, more hickory chips will start smoking. Okay. Okay, we got some chunks in there, and uh, like I said, today we're going to be smoking, so uh, we need to put a diffuser in there to keep uh, the direct heat off of the food. Okay, so uh, what I've done, I've bought this 18-inch uh, uh, Weber grate that uh, fits down in here nice. Uh, the uh, acorn sells a ceramic plate that fits down in there, but I think it's forty forty five dollars and uh, I just chose to do this uh, put the grate down in there then I bought a little pan that I lined with the uh, foil. I set that down in there for my diffuser. Uh, some people use pizza pans. Uh, I chose to go with the pan. Uh, that way if I want to add water and do a water smoke, I can do that, or I can use this to uh, catch the droppings uh, from whatever from whatever I'm cooking uh, to make gravy or whatever. Okay, so uh, that's all set up. Now we're going to put our uh, top grate in there. Okay. And I don't know whether you can see it or not, but I have my temperature probe uh, stuck in there to monitor the uh, temperature of the grill. And now we uh, put it in the center grate. Okay. Uh, prior to your first cook, you want to make sure you uh, put peanut oil or some kind of oil all over this uh, cast iron grate to get it seasoned real good. Uh, uh, what I, I use peanut oil uh, that stands up to higher temperatures better and uh, just put it all over there and uh, got the heat up to uh, 450, 500 degrees and let it burn for a couple hours and uh, I do that periodically. So uh, what you want to do is take this uh, barbecue probe and plug it into your transmitter so we can monitor the temperature of the grill and uh, also I got the uh, temperature probe for the meat already plugged into the uh, transmitter of course we don't have the meat on there yet but uh, anyway we're ready to close the lid and uh, watch the temperature temperature build up now to monitor the temperature you want to uh, turn the receiver on first okay and then we want to power up the uh, transmitter. Okay. And as you can see, uh, it says the barbecue, the grill, it's up to 90 degrees. And the, uh, well, it says the food's 84 degrees, but 
the probe for the food is just laying here, so uh, evidently it's about 84 degrees outside. So uh, you can see the temperature of the grill is 93. And what we're shooting for uh, for the smoke is uh, 225, 250, somewhere around in there. So we're going to let this uh, burn a little bit here and get a little bit hotter uh, with the dampers wide open. Uh, then we'll come back and uh, start closing those down and uh, try to get 225, 250. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, we're back at the grill now. And, and as you can see, uh, the barbecue uh, temperature is uh, 167, 169. So uh, it's cranking up pretty quick and we got a good smoke going here. But what we need to do is uh, shut these dampers. We're going to shut them about uh, halfway, both the top and the bottom, okay? Because we're uh, wanting to get it 225, 250 for our smoke. So right now, uh, grill temperature is 174. And uh, we'll pause this recording and come back and uh, we'll readjust the dampers. Okay, uh, we're back and uh, grill temperature is 185. Uh, it's climbing pretty quick. Uh, we're going to, have, going to go ahead and uh, close these dampers up uh, quite a bit. Try to bring that temperature up slow so we don't overshoot. Right now the grill temperature is 190, so uh, we're getting pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you where I have the damper set. Uh, this is the uh, top damper. As you can see, it's just barely open. And if we shoot down here to the bottom damper, I don't know whether you can see that or not, but uh, right in here is the opening. Uh, it's not open very much at all, just barely cracked. And that's about what you need for 225, uh, 250 de uh, degree smoke. Okay, we're back at the grill now. And uh, I can show you here the uh, grill temperature uh, says it's 226. Uh, so what uh, jumped up to 228. So it's right in range there. Uh, so uh, you could go ahead and put your meat on if we were going to cook something today, but uh, we're not. So uh, when you open this lid and to get your meat on there and stuff, your temperature is going to drop. Okay. Uh, right now it uh, says it's a 230. Well, it just dropped to 217. So by the time you get your meat on here and uh, get the lid closed back up, that temperature is going to drop quite a bit. Uh, 199 degrees grill temperature, 199. Okay. Uh, now to get that back up to 225, uh, you don't want to mess with the dampers. Just leave them set where they're at. The temperature will come back up where it was. So uh, there you have it. That's all you need to do to smoke. Uh, then when you're uh, done cooking your uh, meal, uh, take of course take your food off and uh, close these dampers all the way both the top and the bottom and uh, that'll turn the fire off and uh, you'll have uh, charcoal left for uh, your next cook that's it thanks for joining me today and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications we're going to have uh, plenty of uh, mouth-watering recipes on here so be sure to tune in.